So in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at the specs of the new Ranger which Ford released today. And at the start of the model run through, there's six models, starting with the XL, the XLT, XLS, the Sport, and topping the range, the Wildtrak, along with, of course, the Ranger Raptor. Okay, so what are the headlines then? Um, leaving aside the Raptor, let's compare it to the PX3. Now, the PX3's engine had a three point, was a 3.2 diesel or a 2 litre diesel, 147 versus 157 kilowatts. And we compare that to the new Ranger, that's actually got four engines of which two are going to be of most interest to people. The two litre single turbo is only really for the base um, XL models, tradies, etc. And the three litre twin turbo um, petrol is only for Raptor. That leaves us with the two litre bi-turbo diesel, which is a carryover from the PX3 and is identical in spec as far as I can see, same um, maximum torque 1750 to 2000 rpm but it's lost three kilowatts why i don't know but um, but there we go of perhaps more interest is the three litre turbo diesel v6 and that is 184 kilowatts so 27 extra and an extra 100 newton meters now there's no manual in the new range it's, it's all automatics all 10 speeders apart from the uh, two litre there so there you go the three litre which is not available across the range, of course, 27 extra kilowatts, 100 extra Newton meters of torque, and that's a noticeable, that will be a noticeable power difference. Okay, some other key specs. The GVM is pretty much the same. Um, instead of a single GVM for all for most of the range, which was 3200 of the PX3, it's now 3190, 3230, and 3280, depending on the model and the engine, etc. The GCM has increased from 6,000 kilograms for most specs up to um, 6,200 to 6,400. Now that is significant, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The tow pack. That now includes an electric brake controller, which is really good news. You don't need to go and buy one of those. So that's something to factor in when you're looking at your cost. We don't have pricing for the vehicle yet. It does warn if, if, there's a, um, if the trailer is disconnected. It's also got an interesting feature that the car will look at what its ABS is doing. And based on what its ABS is doing, if the ABS is going to activate, it will then change in some way the braking force sent to the trailer. Now, I'm not necessarily 100% on that because I, because what you want is the trailer braking probably to its maximum, so I need to get more details from Ford about how that works, but I'm going to trust that they've done their homework and it's going to be a good thing and not a gimmick. Oh, by the way, it's also a proportional brake controller as well, and what that means is the harder you press on the tow car's brake pedal, the more brake pressure is automatically applied to the trailer, which is generally a good thing, but I'm sure it would have an override switch as well, just in case you need to get rid of some trailer sway. You can look at my other videos on that. There is a tow haul mode on the XLS um, onwards. Now all that does is just change gear shift points. It doesn't really do anything else apart from that. So it, you know it's not a major deal, but it's but it's nice to have it. Um, blind spot monitoring in, now includes trailers if you set it up correctly. So that little light that appears in the dash that will now warn you if someone's coming into your trailer blind spot. So that's potentially useful as well in case you've lost the ability to look in your mirrors. Other key specs. Now, there's some missing. We don't know the axle limits at the moment. I'd like to get hold of those. I don't know the fuel tank size or the consumption. Um, but let's move on to a spec comparison. So let's take the XL to begin with. We've got a curb weight, a, a GVM. Um, that gives us a payload, one minus the other. Uh, the curb weight does include a full tank of fuel, by the way, which is good. Um, we've got a GCM um, here, 6200, maximum tow, it's 3500 across the range, as you'd expect. And then I've calculated here uh, the payload when it is towing that 3500 kilogram load, and that's the difference you'll see from the PX range. Now, we don't need to allow for the um, GVM because I've taken that into consideration already, and in fact, the Payload limit is actually set by the GCM, not the GVM, which is important. We've also calculated here how much you could tow if you had the vehicle loaded to GVM. And remember, when you load the vehicle to GVM, out of that GVM, you have to take your um, your tow ball mass. And I've assumed 10%. If your tow ball mass is less than that, that figure um, would, would go up. And um, if you're interested, um, this is not a critical figure, but 
I've also calculated here the difference between the GVM and the max load, uh, uh, max tow, and the GCM, and that should ideally be the same, but it's still a, a difference, minus 490 kilograms um, for the new Ranger. Okay, so let's run through it then. Uh, we've got the um, XL coming a single turbo and a bi-turbo. These are all four-wheel drive dual cabs, by the way. Um, and XLT as well another XLT, but now we're into the V6s. You can see here that the GCM is changing from 6200, 6350. So again, when you're looking at a particular vehicle, be it a Range or anything else, make sure that you look at the exact specs for the exact model you want to buy. Don't just go, oh, okay, I think the GVM is, is, is uh, the same across the range, because it typically isn't, and certainly not with the new Ranger. Um, and also the GVM is changing as well from 3190, 3230, 3280, depending on the model. And we go all the way up to the Wild Track and the Raptor, which of course, as before, is a bit of a payload and towing disappointment. Only two and a half tons and the payload is only 699 um, kilograms. Now Ford, for some reason, in the spec sheet said, oh, we're gonna calculate the Raptor's payload differently using its tear weight, not the curb weight, and the curb weight actually includes a full tank of fuel and the tear weight doesn't. So why they've done that, I don't know. I've ignored that and I've just gone and calculated the Raptor's payload exactly the same as everything else, so it's consistent. I really don't understand what Ford are trying to do with that. Okay, um, and the maximum um, tow ball mass is 350 kilograms. I presume not the case for Raptor. Ford spec sheet didn't say. Now let's take a look at the um, payloads, which is how much you can carry. Now. In last place, of course, we have the Raptor with only about 600, um, about 700 kilograms. That's still um, better than the previous model, but you've got to look at those axle loads. Could be devil in the detail there. Um, the Sport V6 is next, and pretty much the rest of them, they're around about the 1,000 kilogram mark. So my takeaway from this is, look, um, yeah, 1,000, Pretty good. I wouldn't have minded seeing some with a heavy duty load, 11, 12, even 1300 would have been really nice there, but you know, it's not bad. We're not down about the eight, 900 mark, which is terrible for you. So, so um, fairly happy with that, but not super happy and a little bit disappointed that there's not at least one model into 11, 1200 mark. Okay, now let's take a look at the maximum brake tow. This is fairly straightforward. Raptor is two and a half tons. Everything else is, as you can see, nicely three and a half tons. Now this one is where you have the vehicle loaded to its GVM. How much can you tow with it? And again, the Raptor is the absolute lowest. It's only got that two and a half ton rating. Then we've got the XL single turbo. Everything else is pretty close together as you can see. And again, the differences there just due to that slight variation in GVM um, curb weight and the curb weights due to things like, does it have steel wheels? Does it have extra power um, electric convenience features, etc., etc. All of that makes a difference and Ford's changing of the limits such as GVM and GCM. So this is the payload or how much you can put in the vehicle when you are towing the maximum, which in all cases is three and a half tons, except for the Raptor, which is two and a half tons. And I've also allowed here a 10% tow ball mass. So that's 350 or 250 kilograms. Now I do not necessarily endorse a 10% tow ball mass. People are fixated on it. You shouldn't be, there's no science behind it. I run less than that, I'm very happy, but I am using it as a nice round figure just for the purposes of calculation. So as you'd expect, the Raptor is pretty miserable at 450 kilograms. Then the XL is not great either. Um, it then just goes up a bit and the rest here are pretty much much of a muchness. Now the reason for the variation in this lot is because the GVM is different, the curb weight is different, etc. And all of that translates into, oh, and the GCM is different. So all of those figures being slightly different translate into an, a slightly different amount of payload there. And the figures are in the previous slide if you want to compare those. All right, so let's take a look at a PX3 XLT versus a new Ranger XLT. Now they're not exactly comparable because the specs you got on the old 
PX3 XLT are different from the XLT specs of the new Ranger, but let, let's do that comparison anyway. So curb weight, um, the new vehicle is five kilograms lighter and it's got a 30 kilogram greater GVM, which means it can take 35 kilograms more payload. So, so far, so good. This is where the big change comes in. The GCM has gone from 6,000 kilograms to 6,350. That's a big change of 350 kilograms. The GCM, of course, being the sum of the tow car and the trailer, and that's how much that can weigh combined, the gross combined mass. Okay, so now this is where it starts to get interesting. If we look at how much payload we can put in the vehicle whilst towing that maximum of three and a half tonnes, with the PX3 it's only 270 um, kilograms, but with the new Ranger it's 625, and that's purely due to the increased GCM. So that's good news. So the one takeaway here is that with your new Ranger, you are still able to tow three and a half tonnes, but you're actually able to put significantly more in the vehicle compared to a PX class range, a PX1 to PX3. And um, same sort of deal across here. If we load the vehicle, the, the car up to its GVM, how much can we then tow? Because that GCM limit is higher, the PX3 is limited to 2800, whereas with the new range, it's not 3500, but it's better, it's 3120. And again, that's due to the um, increased GCM limit. Okay, let's talk a bit about off-road. Now, there is an adaptive terrain system, which is how you reconfigure the vehicle into different modes for things like mud, sand, rocks, etc. But they used to call it TMS, Terrain Management System. That name does not appear in Ford's press release, so I don't know what they've done with it, but it's still an adaptive terrain system. There is all-wheel drive in some models. I'm going to talk about that next. Um, there is a front locker, but it's only for Raptor. Basically, here's a tip. Whenever you see a manufacturer talk about a headline feature, it sounds really cool. It's probably not standard across the range, right? so don't get too excited. There's disc brakes on um, XLT and above, which is good. And there's a second battery bay underneath the bonnet, except for the Raptor, which runs the petrol engine. And there's an off-road screen, which frankly, I don't think is that exciting. It shows you if the lock is engaged, you got an icon for that anyway. It shows you where your steering wheel is pointed. Again, not really necessary. It shows you pitch and roll. You know, you've got a sphincter for that, you don't really need it. 360 degree camera, again, nice to have, but I wouldn't say that's essential. Now, I do expect the new Ranger to be better off-road because um, it should have much better brake traction control than previous. Ford have historically been really weak with that on the PX Ranger, which is the one I drive. Um, it got better with the PX2, a bit better with the PX3, the software update, so I'm expecting um, the new Ranger to be really good in that respect compared to the previous one. Will it be to the standard of Toyota and Land Rover? Don't know, I've got to see one actually work or drive on myself. Now, here's the, the new thing, four-wheel drive modes. This has changed, but only for some vehicles. So we've got um, the classic part-time four-wheel drive, as we have in the PX Ranger and most other utes, but for the V6, uh, diesel only and the Raptor, it is now full-time four-wheel drive. And what that means is this. In both the old and the new, you've got a two-wheel drive mode where it only drives the rear, dr rear wheels. With the part -time, well, so with the new full-time four-wheel drive, you can run it in all-wheel drive mode, i.e. with what you would classically think of the centre diff unlocked, except it's not actually a centre diff, it's a centre clutch. It kind of does the same thing as a centre diff, but it will electronically shift torque front and rear and not lock up, which is good. So that's in effect if you like. You can kind of think of it as an unlocked centre diff in the old term. Now, you obviously couldn't do that with a part-time four-wheel drive. You put that into four-wheel drive, drive on the road you're going to get into something called transmission wind up which I've explained in another video and you don't want to find out what that's like. Then we've got in 4H mode which is four wheel drive high range and obviously we've got that in the part time system and we've got this um, and I presume the centre diff can be locked although I've not actually confirmed that yet otherwise why would it be a 4H mode. Um, and four wheel drive low range. Um, again, we had that always with part time four wheel drives, and yes, we've got that. And I'm presuming it's a lock centre diff. Now, I'm hoping it's a lock centre diff because Ford do have a problem with the Everest where you put it on a slope facing downhill um, and you put the park brake on 
the thing will unlock its center diff and just slide down a hill, unlock it again as it detects. I've got another video that will explain it. I hope this hasn't been a problem for the new Ranger four wheel drive and it's got a proper locked center diff, but time will tell. Now, the adaptive terrain system. So the XL gets nothing, absolutely nothing. The XLS gets the normal eco and tow haul mode and a slippery mode, which I think it's actually a good way to name it. Rather than something like, you know, snow, call it a slippery mode, because snow is not necessarily that slippery. And people made the mistake with the Land Rover system of going into deep snow and using the snow mode when the snow mode was really for very sort of icy, slippery surfaces. So calling it slippery is probably a good move, I think, on behalf of Ford. The XLT gets the same. The Sport gets a mud rut and a sand mode, but interestingly, not a rock crawl mode. The Everest um, has had a rock crawl mode, the Sport not. But also, ironically, the Sport doesn't get a sport mode, and this is yet another abuse of the name Sport by manufacturers. They always think, yeah, anyway. The Wild Track gets um, the same as the Sport, and the Raptor um, doesn't get a slippery mode. Why not? Is it not meant to be driven in slippery conditions? It does, however, get a sport mode, and it gets a barge mode. So just doesn't make a whole heap of sense to me, but um, there you go, there it is. Um, my personal view is that I don't really think a lot of these extra modes are gonna be necessary. I think you're gonna be able to drive an XLS or even an XL for that matter, anywhere you wanna go. And remember all the tow haul mode does is just um, put the gearbox automatically into a better, uh, just change the shift points a little bit here and there, but um, typically modern gearboxes, and I'm sure Fords would be no exception, figure out the load anyway and tend not to hunt around. So I don't know how much difference that tow haul is actually going to make. Again, the test will have to prove that. So here's my summary view of the new Ranger based off the spec sheet and some educated guesses. First thing is the big tow improvement is the increased GCM. So the upshot of that is that with the PX Ranger, when you towed a heavy trailer, you could have very little payload in the vehicle. Because the GCM is increased, you can now have much more, maybe 300, 400 kilograms more. So that's a huge improvement. Now the GCM isn't where it should be. It should be equal to the sum of the GVM plus the uh, max brake tow, and it isn't, but um, we, we take the wins where we can. Power and torque improvement, that should be noticeable from the driver's seat, but that, again, that's only with the three litre diesel, which is only available in some specs and do expect to pay for it. Um, all wheel drive, I love all wheel drive in a ute, um, that would be fantastic, but again, that's only available in some specs and I, I would expect a price premium for it. And also I really hope you can properly lock the center diff slash clutch. I do expect the vehicle to be better off-road purely because I'm expecting the brake traction control to um, be improved and various other little things, but I wouldn't expect a massive step change. I'm not seeing anything in the specs which leads me to believe it's going to be massively more capable than a PX3 um, brake traction control um, accepted. If you're not sure what brake traction control is, watch my other video where I, I explain that. The Raptor is limited in payload and tow as before, which to me is a great shame. I actually had a deposit on the first Raptor when I saw the specs, I got rid of it. Um, I like the idea of the Raptor being a rally car, but realistically I'd compromise a bit on that rally carness so it could tow more, but I guess that would bring it too close to the wild track. But anyway, um, that's what that is. So I think my summary here is there's not a lot of massive leap forward step changes, but there's a lot of little improvements. And I kind of get the feeling when we start to drive the car, that's gonna add up to quite a significantly improved vehicle in so many ways over the um, PX3, that's kind of my feel. Um, and I do expect big price differences between the XLS and things like the um, Wild Track with the V6 diesel, um, the all-wheel drive, etc., etc. I think all that's going to really add up. Just remember that the biggest payload is going to be found in the lower spec models, and not only that. Um, Realistically, you're not going to be able to drive anywhere in Australia, you, you know, taking a, an XL or XS. It will still get you there. The others might still just get you there in a bit more comfort. So if you found this video useful, I will be doing some more on this vehicle as and when I can get hold of one. Um, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.